Speed. Marker. Everybody settle. And action. Did we get all the equipment rented for tomorrow night? Still haven't heard about the location, though. Mm, that's cool. Anything going on tonight? We probably should get the cast together for a read-through. Maybe roll a J, hang out. I can do that. Do you think we should, um... Ugh, oh, damn it. Alan, can I get a cut? And we're cut. Hey, did anyone, uh, happen to bring any extra blank tapes? The idea for Red Light, or the uh, original seed anyway, came from uh, my personal experience in the industry. They say, write what you know, you know? Well, obviously, my expertise is in the uh, art of visual storytelling. And no one has ever thought about making a film about the industry or the filmmaking process. A film that you're shooting on video. Uh, film, tape, video, whatever you want to call it. We, we did some different, uh, uh, we did some experimentation with different uh, stocks and, and lenses and, and stuff. Um, we thought that, that being self-referential in the storyline would give it this uh, uh, cyclical feel. Something uh, original, fresh, fresh, exciting. You know, like a, like a new uh, photographer or artist who does a self-portrait. I mean, you just don't ever see that kind of stuff, you know? Right? Tell us about your background. Oh, um, well, I started off in the commercial sector. Um, did very well with that. Made some money. But uh, working with those agency types left me creatively bankrupt. So then I started doing some experimental shorts. You know, really testing the limits of the camera. I mean, we did some good work with that. Then, I decided to go back to school. And that... <laughs> is where I rekindled my passion for film. Video. Video. And that's also where I met most of the crew for Red Light. And eventually what led us to this very moment, on the verge of its, hopefully, triumphant release. Sophia, what do you mean Steve can't do the movie? He's our villain. He says his kids got Little League on Wednesdays. Well, can't we have a cover set on standby in case there's a rain out? Hello, Martin. All his scenes are exteriors. Who's going to drive the van? Why did I ever decide to go into the film business? Hey, girly. Oh, yeah, sort of, but it's okay. Cut! Film is not cheap, you know? Hey, wait. Maybe we could rework the script or something. Maybe she's talking to a studio exec. No. Hey, uh, Wes, can we bust out this EPK thing real quick with you? The, uh, oh, the thing for the DVD. Yeah. Oh, you guys got a nice setup. So this is where everybody lines up to blow the director, right? So he'll call us again when he's got some real money. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful with that. Uh, Thank you. Sure thing. The, uh, I do like these behind the scenes things, though. We ought to make a drinking game out of it. Every time somebody says the word Alan Smithy, everybody's got to take a shot. <laughs> you know, it'd be hilarious. Hey, can you scream that tweeny? They made one of these that actually shows how it really happens. That would be great. 
Hey, uh, you've got a little red light on your camera there. Alan's by far the most talented director that I've ever worked with. I mean, the performances that he who, is who, able I'm to... I'm sorry, who else have you worked with? Not including... Alan? Well, um... He lets me sleep here. You can edit this part out, right? I wake up every day in complete awe that I'm even on the same set with these people. I mean, you only get one and introducing credit in your whole career, and I can't think of a better guy to pop my screen cherry than Alan. And Cassie and the rest of the cast, amazing, amazing actors. I mean, when we're on the set and in the zone, it's like we're making a real movie. You're not? Well, no, I mean, I'm not talking about Red Light. I mean the fictional movie within the movie that Martin and Sophia are struggling to make after they win the screenplay contest. It's called Inner Demons, Inter... Dem I'm not sure. I'm not the writer. That uh, sounds confusing. Yeah, it's not something you should think too hard about. So let me get this straight. They got me here making this little movie about you guys making a movie about the movie some people are making because they won a movie contest? Which is exactly what happened to us. So this experience has really allowed us to bring the audience into our world. Both the magic that we make and the challenges we face every day as filmmakers. By learning from your own struggles on the video set? What do you mean? Ooh, that's not good. Oh, that was great. All right, uh, let me punch in for close-ups. Okay, now I'm gonna roll camera. Cut. Awesome. You guys, we can't top that. That was great. Um, next, uh, Cassie's single. All right, stand by, and action. Cut! Oh my God, that was priceless. We're never gonna get that again. All right, um, we're wrapped here. Hey, uh, why is that little light on? Do you hear that? No. What? I don't know. Some kind of hum or buzzing sound. It's not major, but... I'm a star. A big, bright, shining star. Um... Now, I don't want to get into very many technical details and bore you all with stuff like um, F-stoops and tree pods and things like that, but I think that... Oh, hey, everybody. Looks like the uh, video crew is here doing their behind-the-scenes thing. Guess they wanted to get some shots of me doing my uh, commentary track and probably pick up a free film school lesson, too. <laughs> anyway, on this particular day, I remember that the bagels were really, really stale, and that damn cat wouldn't hold still, so we had to super glue his paws to the table, and then we got some call from PETA saying that there was some issue with that. I can't believe they're making us wait on these clouds. There's something I should tell you. I'm probably gonna get a role on a soap opera up in Chicago, so I'll probably have to leave the film. Wow. So, what do we do now? And cut. Fantastic. Okay, now we're moving on to scene 12A. This is right after he had sex in the production. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Are we shooting out of sequence? What what happened to 11? You know, the one where we, uh... We had to cut that scene. I got a memo from Jeff. Your boyfriend? What? Don't look at me. Alan's the one who made him script supervisor. Oh, so now this is my fault. This is my fault. I... I... Oh. Oh, the chemistry that we enjoy on the set is really special. I mean, I've known these people for years. Of course, we all met at the Lloyd Kaufman Film Studies program, and we kind of sort of developed our own little repertory. Uh, you know, where each one of us works on each other's projects. So you're not one of these one-man band type egomaniacal directors? Oh, no, no, not at all. I mean, you can't. You can't do it by yourself. It's a collaborative art form. Um, but it's good to maintain some humility. You know, mastering each role on the set before you sit in this chair. I mean, not 
not this exact chair, but you know, the one I sit on, on on the set when there's somebody else there to hold the camera. Um, but like with Cassie, you know, with her stuff, I'll act, grip. Gaffer? Uh, what? Gaffer? Uh, yeah, gaffer, read lines with her, whatever she needs. Well, so after we capture all this magic on film, I work closely with our editor, Alan Smithy, to put it all together. This is his chair, actually. Uh, this is Alan and I's third film together. What were the others? Uh, the first was Lori Takes a Shower, um, which is about a girl coming clean, really. Not a lot of editing in that one. More of, a, of an exercise in, in letting the scene develop and, and, and speak at its own natural pacing. Although, we did do nine takes of the master shot. And the other one was called uh, Weird Guy on Porch. And it was this French style, new wave character study thing. And actually it was what won the contest that allowed us to do red light. And really marked the beginning of our experiments with what Alan likes to call digital film. How's your working relationship? With Alan? Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, I have to say that it's really, really intuitive. I mean, we are very much the same person. A lot of times, he'll come in and tell me that, that he would have cut a scene exactly the way I just did it, if he knew how to use a computer. But he does like to be very uh, involved in my work, which for any other team without the kind of relationship we have, it might be a little distracting. You know, that whole uh, voice in your head thing. Those guys make a unique pair, just the way they work together. I mean, I've never actually seen them in the same room, but they have this great understanding of how to get the best out of each other. <laughs> There's a lot of love there, and I think it shows in the final cut. You wouldn't know it to watch us work, but this business can just knock you on your ass some days. Hey, watch out. Sorry. Sorry. Here, take this. You want some, bitch? What? You got a fucking problem? Hey, man. This is between Alan and me. No, you, keep rolling on this. I'm taking your ass to school. Smithy did no talent, tape-wasting fuck. You see this? This is called cinema verite, right? It means truth. Exposing things for what Gordon, they real- what's low bat mean? I got this flashy thing going on. You've got to be kidding me. It was stupid. Unprofessional. I'm supposed to be objective, right? A good documentarian? I don't know, things just got way out of hand yesterday. I don't know what happened. I guess they just got too close to this. It's not even my project, what do I care? It just pisses me off when- Pisses me off when punks like you get a hold of some cheap video gear, read a couple articles on the internet, and all of a sudden think you're gonna be the next fucking Fellinis, man. You know, they gave us a million dollars to make this film. Yeah. And uh, how many cans of turd polish do you think that'll buy? You know, and another thing, this is video, you pretentious hack. Video, not film. There's a difference, look it up, okay? I spent 10 years of my life busting ass trying to get good at this stuff. Where's my fucking feature filmmaking grant, huh? I mean, I, I spend a couple thousand dollars of my own money on these things, just hoping for a screening at some podunk festival in Nutsack, Montana, you know? And another thing. Do you hear that? What? It sounds like music. <sighs> Hi, I'm Alan Smithy, composer and chief sound designer for the film Red Light. And I'm here to share some insight into the score of this powerful, wonderful film. It's been a truly magical experience working both with Alan and Alan. And I hope they keep me in mind for future projects. 
I'm responsible for pretty much everything you hear in this film, from the seven sound effects to those little subtle musical cues that add dramatic tension to key scenes, like when Sophia and Martin are making love in the van. I noticed some of the location sound has a little hum in it. Is that something that you... That's not me. Okay. Um, so how do you match the imagery that we see on screen up with the music that you hear in your head? Yes, that is what is most rewarding about this job. It all starts over here in my music library. And what I do is I grab a couple of discs, put them in and listen, and try and match up the music to the actor's subtext. Do you understand subtext? Okay, um, after that I just import it into the computer. Hey, pal. What was the name of Counting Crow's first album? August and Everything After. That's right, perfect. Thanks. You bet. So that's what, like a placeholder just to set a mood until you can put your original music in later? What do you mean? Well, you have to license those songs. I mean, it's not cheap. Oh no, I paid for them. I bought them at the Virgin Megastore. I have the receipt. So, Sophia, she's like dealing with her own ambitions and stuff, so she sort of becomes the antagonist, you know? I mean, inner dementia is like her way of breaking into film. And while she wants to help Martin and stuff, she really wants to direct. So oh, Martin, Martin is trying to like edge Sophia out of the production so the studio will see his talent. Yet at the same time, there's this odd sexual tension, which makes Martin a great character opportunity for me because I'm, you know, a really queer sort of mystery. You never really know if the characters are plotting against each other or the studio system they're both now slaves to. It's a multi-layered story that really screws with your head, especially if you consider he has no idea what the hell he's doing. What are his goals? Why is he in the van in the first place? Where are his pants? But through editing, we can clue the viewer in using flashbacks that make you wonder, Jesus, who writes this shit? Oh, I'm not proud. I had four evenings to finish a feature-length script because at the last minute, Alan decides he's going to cast all of his friends and then try and do the rest himself after sticking most of the studio's budget up his nose. Hopefully the guy will come to his senses and take his name off this project. At least I've got this witness protection deal going on here with you guys. And cut. Fantastic. I think we got everything we need. Appreciate it. All right, and after all this film is edited, you're going to give my card to Spielberg? Absolutely. Next time I see him, Stephanie Mitchell of Austin, Texas. All right. <laughs>